having derived the stability criterion, it's time to do some examples. Let's do a few in the case of continuous time systems, finding and then classifying equilibria. Let's begin with a simple example we've seen before. Recall the logistic model from earlier in this chapter. Do you remember that one? That was a continuous time system. It says dx dt equals r times x times quantity k minus x. Here x is a population size and r and k are positive constants. r is something like a reproduction rate or a growth rate and k is some kind of capacity, like a carrying capacity. What are the steps? The first thing we do is we solve for the equilibria. So take dx dt, r times x times k minus x, set that equal to zero, and then solve for x. This is not going to be difficult. There are two roots to that quadratic polynomial. The first is x equals 0, and the second is x equals k. So those are our two and only two equilibria for this system. Now the next step, to apply the stability criterion, we take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to the state variable, x. So what's the derivative of r times x times k minus x with respect to x? That's not bad. The first term has derivative k times r. The second term has derivative minus 2 times r times x. Now I need to take that derivative and evaluate it at the equilibrium. The first equilibrium, x equals 0, this evaluates to k times r. Since both of those constants are positive, the stability criterion says that x equals 0 is an unstable equilibrium. But what about the second equilibrium? At x equals k, when I evaluate the derivative there, I get k times r minus 2 times r times k. That simplifies to minus k times r. That is a negative number. That means that the equilibrium at x equals k is a stable equilibrium. That's it. That was pretty easy. There's not that much to this. We have two equilibria. The first one at x equals 0, unstable. Second one, x equals k, stable. Does this match with what we learned when we computed the solution explicitly? When we computed a limit of x of t as t goes to infinity? Yes, we saw that it always diverged away from x equals 0 from a small population, and it converged towards this limiting carrying capacity x equals k. And now that makes sense. That's the stable equilibrium. Now this is so nice. There was very little work required to do this. We didn't have to do any integration. We didn't have to do a whole lot of algebra. We didn't need an explicit solution, and we didn't need to linearize the system formally and do a formal Taylor expansion. The stability criterion requires that Taylor expansion for the proof, but to use it in practice, all you need to do is compute the derivative. Evaluated at the equilibrium, and as long as that is non-zero in a continuous time setting, boom, that's it, you're done. Let's see how this works in a different example. Recall the simple model for the velocity of a falling body where there's some drag force. This is something we saw earlier in this chapter. The model is this, dv dt equals negative g plus kappa v squared. Here v is the velocity of your falling body, g is positive and is equal to the gravitational constant, and kappa is a positive constant that is a drag coefficient. Okay, how do we deal with this system? The first thing we do, the first thing we always do, is we solve for the equilibrium. In this case, what do we get? dv dt is negative g plus kappa v squared, set that equal to zero, solve for v. Well, that's easy. Move the negative g over to the other side, divide by kappa, take the square root, and we get two equilibria. The first is at v equals square root of g over kappa, but that's not the only one. We can also take the negative square root and get v equals minus square root of g over kappa. These are our two equilibria. Now, I recall that in this model, 
we wanted to restrict the velocity to be non-positive. So we really only care about that negative root physically, but for the moment, let's just look at both of them and see what happens. How do we apply the stability criterion? We take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to the state variable. That's v. There's no x in here. So the derivative with respect to v of negative g plus kappa v squared is simply 2 times kappa times v. If I evaluate that derivative at the positive equilibrium, I get 2 times square root of g times kappa. This is a positive number, and that means that this is an unstable equilibrium. On the other hand, if I evaluate this at the negative equilibrium, at minus root g over kappa, then the derivative evaluates to minus 2 square root of g times kappa. That's a negative number. This is a stable equilibrium. Now again, it's that second equilibrium, that stable one, that our model is really concerned with. And in this case, what is that? Well, of course, that is the terminal velocity. This body is falling, and the, the velocity, it's getting faster and faster, but drag is acting on it, slowing it down, and eventually this converges to a terminal velocity. Okay, what do we see from this? We see that the stability criterion is easy to use. In fact, it's easier to use than to prove. There's no need to do a formal Taylor expansion of everything. Simply compute the derivative, evaluate at the equilibria, check the sign. Positive, unstable, negative, stable, that's it. That's it for continuous time. What happens in discrete time? That comes next.